Well, I wanted to start the video saying thank you for 200 subscribers, but the number is actually higher. 260 subs. <laughs> that is just crazy. Last video I thanked you for 160 subs, and now we gained 100 subs in a single week? That is just amazing. I have no clue how to thank you. I guess I have to think about that now. Anyway, let's just continue with the video. Hello everyone. My name is Peter and you're watching a devlog about my game Treasured. A temple raiding, museum building, co-op puzzle game. When we look at the road towards Steam Early Access, we can see that I'm currently working on level design. Procedurally generating levels. In this video, I will be creating a generator to spawn randomly generated plants and rubble. I started this week by coming up with a plan. Instead of using Trello, I wanted to look into using notes on a whiteboard. This way I can directly see my to-do list instead of first going to Trello with multiple clicks. I want to spawn foliage and rubble. In order for me to do that, I first need a grid to get some spawn locations. I want this grid to scale when I want more or less objects. And in order for everything to look different, I need some sort of generator to spawn plants or rocks. When we look at the fern that I used in my mockups, we can see that they are all the same. I want the scene to feel more organic by generating those plants randomly, since nature is random. We can also see that walls have missing stones, and I want those stones to be on the ground, since this way the wall and rubble will feel more believable. I guess these tasks are enough for this week. For the grid, I immediately thought about this great tutorial from Sebastian Lake, Lag about Poisson disk sampling. To keep it simple, it will generate a bunch of points that are a minimal distance apart from each other, so they never intersect. This actually works great in my levels. There are still some cases where objects intersect, but this is because I'm generating these points per grid. So for every square that you see, I generate a new area of points within that square. These squares don't communicate with each other, so they have no clue other objects are spawned there. This will be fixed in the future when I look at edge cases. I guess the grid task is done now, and the scaling as well. See, with the Poisson disks, I can specify a radius. A big radius will result in less points with a bigger space between them, and a smaller radius will show more points with a small space between them. So thank you Sebastian, this tutorial helped with both tasks. These notes can be put on the pile of completion now. A little side note. I am accounting for the walls, so the points that are intersecting with the walls will not be used when spawning objects. Let's actually spawn some objects now. Starting with the fern. When we look at the original fern, we can see that it has four leaves in a circular pattern. And that's basically it. Let's now look at what my generator can do and how I can recreate this fern. Let's start with the meshes. I can supply the generator with multiple meshes, which it can then use to randomly pick one. When looking at the position, I can either say spawn it in the center, or randomly in a radius from the center. For the fern, I want it to be in the center. For rotation, I can choose four options. 1. Do nothing. 2. Randomly choose a rotation. 
3. Rotate every mesh equally. And 4. Rotate them equally, but add a little bit of randomness to them. For the fern, I want the last option. I also have some options about the scale. The whole object can get a random scale, or every mesh can get a random scale. This gives every leaf on the fern a little difference. I can also supply a random X rotation for a mesh, a random amount of meshes, and last but not least, I can add multiple of these layers on top of each other. These options allow me to generate a bunch of random ferns, but not only ferns. I can swap the meshes for some stones, change the position method, rotation method and scaling. And now I have a random rubble generator. Let's have a look at the scene when the ferns are generated for me. These ferns only spawn in areas where the moisture level is high. This is another option for the generator to use. This can then also be applied to the rubble and the destruction map. The last thing I want to show you is the spawn event. This can be seen with the wall. Whenever an empty brick is used in the wall, a spawn event is triggered to spawn a brick on the ground in front of the wall. Currently this is the only implemented spawn event, but more will be implemented in time. Let me also give you guys a small update on my graduation. In order for me to pass the graduation, I have to pass my document and I have to pass a presentation. Before, I filled the document, so they didn't even let me present. This week, I got a message saying that I can present, meaning I now have a shot at passing my graduation. It might not sound very exciting, telling you guys that I can do a presentation, but it's a major achievement towards the actual bachelor degree. That is all I have for you this week. Next week I will focus on the spawn events and more foliage generation. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to the channel and get notified when I upload the next devlog. Please let me know what you would like to see generated in the comments below. I'll see you then. Take care.